Now, the NBA draft is one of the most exciting nights in all of the NBA. We get to watch a new generation of players enter the league. And one can argue that it's really easy to seek out that talent when you have a top 10 pick. And I'm a firm believer in that. And don't get me wrong, we do have times when some players, they don't pan out to the player that we thought they would become and then we call them a bust but what really makes the nba draft fun is when you get into the later stages when you get into the late first round and you get into the second round and you really have to scout for that talent and you really have to look closely and analyze these players and find a nikola Jokic or find a Kawhi leonard find a draymond green and i think one team that's done a great job of finding talent in the later stages of the nba draft is the Houston Rockets. And the first thing we should establish, what is the definition of a quote unquote steal in the NBA draft? And at least how I look at it, I feel like a steal could happen at any placement in the NBA draft. I feel like a number five pick can be a steal if he ends up being better than the four guys drafted ahead of him. So that's just my definition of it. Any guy that was taken and he's clearly better and he clearly has more potential than some of the guys that was taken ahead of him. And with the Houston Rockets, we're just going to start in chronological order because not uh, because why not and this starts in 2021 in 2021 it was a great draft for the Houston Rockets they got a guy that they feel like they, that they could build around and Jalen Green and also later in that first round they had the 16th overall pick with Alvin say goon now getting picked in the middle of the first round at number 16 that's a great accomplishment and obviously you have some talent but with Alvin say goon displayed in the later stages of his rookie season and then the big leap he took in his sophomore year I think we all know that there's not 15 guys better than him in that 2021 NBA draft class and I think he's going to continue to get better and better now the first thing I want to look at right now with Alpine Seikon is his numbers compared to his rookie year to his sophomore year and one thing we have to keep in mind his rookie year he only played about 20 minutes per game and that was the era when the Houston Rockets they did have Christian Wood on the team his rookie season so we fast forward to his sophomore year he's not a starting center he's, he's getting Mark Byrne he saw 28 minutes per game last season and all of his numbers jumped up so with more minutes being offered he was able to up his production last season he averaged around 15 points per game almost a double double at nine rebounds and he also averaged four assists per game and all three of those statistical categories was better than what we saw from his rookie season and also he got more efficient from the um, from the field I believe he went from like 47 percent to 52 percent from the field and also we saw a jump in his three-point percentage as well he was shooting just 24 percent from the three-point line his rookie year to 33% his sophomore year and that's pretty respectable as a center in this league so I love that with the more opportunity and the more minutes that Alperen Sagun was offered we also saw a jump in his production and also Alperen Sagun he just passes the eye test with flying colors you watch him play you can see the potential all over him and I just think he really excels or he has the potential to excel at three facets of the game of basketball. Number one is his playmaking. I love his ability to see the floor at his size. And I know we all heard the confirmed rumor. So that means it's not a rumor anymore. He's grown two inches without his shoes on since he's come into the NBA. So now he's 6'11". Maybe depending on his, you know, his hoop shoes, he might be seven foot tall. So that could help him out a lot. But nonetheless, um, his ability to see the floor is insane. He can pass out of the post he can pass out of the dribble um, handoff he can pass off the rebound making an outlet pass bounce pass chest pass over the head it doesn't matter and also sometimes he put on the show for his teammates and for the crowd by making a flashy pass and another thing that he excels at is rebounding we saw his rebounding jump significantly and went from five rebounds in his rookie season to nine rebounds per game in his sophomore season. Next season, we can probably um, expect him to average 
10 plus rebounds per game and i think he's going to play more than 28 minutes a night i don't know why he's only playing 28 minutes but he should definitely be saying somewhere around 32 33 minutes per game but nonetheless um he's a great rebounder on both the offensive and the defensive side of the ball he has a very high motor and he's very competitive when it comes to rebounding and then also what he can do um, offensively as a scorer we just talked about him expanding his game with the three-point shot and he has a great post game he has great footwork down there he can finish with both hands he can finish with his brute strength and his um, and his weight or he can finish with a soft touch and finesse and most importantly he can really be aggressive down there because he has the ability to knock down free throws so he's not scared to get to the free throw line so I think Al Prince Agnon I think he's been great for the Houston and Rocket so far and with the potential he has displayed with us also mixed in with the production he's given us in his sophomore year I think he's definitely a I think he definitely was a steal in the 2021 NBA draft now we fast forward to the 2022 NBA draft and we get to talk about my favorite player currently on the Houston Rockets and that's Tari Eason. He was a um, he was selected in the middle late first round at pick number 17. Once again, that's a great pick to be selected in the NBA draft. If I was a pro, um, an NBA draft prospect, I was I would be more than happy with that. But the crazy thing is with um, Tari Eason, if you go back and read the mock drafts around that time last year, I a lot of people had him going top 10 and then he fell all the way down to number 17 right into the laps of the Houston Rockets. Now, there's so many reasons to love Tari Eason. Um, and he also had a fantastic rookie season. Just looked at his numbers on just 21 minutes per game. Well, 21 and a half minutes per game. He averaged nine points. He averaged six rebounds. He shot 44% from the field and 34% from the three-point line. So I just thought that was pretty crazy on just 21 minutes per game. And I also saw another crazy stat that when he was out there playing he was um he was getting with his offensive rebounds and his steal his steals combined he was getting the houston rockets an extra nine offensive possessions per game while only giving up two turnovers so that is actually very insane i didn't even know that they kept up with stats like that but that is pretty crazy that he was bringing um as a rookie bringing in another nine possessions per game so Tari Eason I feel like he had a fantastic rookie season and I feel like that rookie season that he had um, it pointed in the right directions for his young NBA career and I think he's very very poised not for a breakout season but I think he's going to take a huge huge leap next season and I think he's definitely going to be given more opportunity now other than his numbers there is a lot to love about him he stands at 6'8 seven two wingspan and he had the biggest hands in his um in his nba draft class and that sounds a lot like Kawhi leonard and when Kawhi leonard came into the league he wasn't the offensive guy that he is right now but he was the defender that he is so tari eason i'm not going to say he has the upside uh as Kawhi leonard on the offensive side of the ball but you never know but i just thought those two things about them were very similar but what he offers to the table defensively you gotta love it especially in today's nba when you have so many talented scores so many guys that can beat you in so many different ways you need defenders that can defend guys in so many different ways and tari eason you can plug this guy literally anywhere on the court he can guard the low post he's a great help defender that's probably my favorite part about his game what he can do in the passing lanes and then rotating down to protect the rim and then also having the ability the athleticism to contest the shot and then pop right back up and grab the rebound and then also we all know he's a monster a monster on the perimeter on the defensive side of the ball the ability the ability to pick up guys full court stay in front of a point guard guard a bigger guy in the low post and then still be an active help defender you can you can ask for more on the defensive side of the ball and then offensively don't sleep on his game offensively i think one underrated part of his game is his playmaking abilities i think he sees the floor very well whenever he gets the ball he does not hold on to it very long he even makes a quick move to attempt to score or he keeps the basketball moving and also his three-point shot seems to be getting better better than we expected um 
one of his bigger question marks in his NBA draft was his three-point shot, and I think he did a good job answering those questions, knocking down 34% of his threes on the offensive side of the ball. But he's a great slasher and a great cutter and finisher around the rim. So I think the Houston Rockets, I think they should be very, very happy and very excited that they could get a player of Tari Eason's caliber at number 17 because I don't believe it's 16 players in the 2022 NBA draft that's better than Tari Eason. So I definitely stamp him as a steal. And then we get to the 2023 NBA draft. And once again, the Houston Rockets, they continue to be thieves. Now this time it was the number 20 pick, the 20th overall pick. So the first round 20th pick, and they got Cam Whitmore. And this situation is very similar to Tari Eason. Tari, uh, we said Tari Eason was mocked to be a top 10 pick and Cam Whitmore was mocked to be a top five pick. And um, I thought for sure he was gonna be a Detroit Pistons, but a uh, Detroit Piston, but we went with a sword Thompson. So I thought, oh, Cam Whitmore is gonna be the sixth overall pick. And then um, he just continued to drop and drop. And at the time I was very confused, but eventually we all found out why. But I think the, the Houston Rockets is actually a perfect situation for Cam Whitmore because we look at this roster, he's not gonna come in and he's not gonna have to have the burdens of, on his shoulders of being a lottery pick right out the gate. I don't think we're gonna have too many expectations on him because the Houston Rockets, they have a very, very solid roster and they have solid guys at his position. So I think they can be very patient with his development and more in, uh, most importantly, more patient with his health. But nonetheless, um, the the potential and the the potential on this guy is off the charts. He's a two-way player. He's 6'7", 230 pounds. And you could tell he did look like a man amongst boys out there in the summer league. They, that's one thing they continue to say about him is that he has that NBA-ready body. But um, nonetheless, um, he showed just how special he is that one summer league game. He had 26 points and eight steals. And that's really what we saw um, from him in college, just flying all over the court. I really love what he does on the defensive side of the ball. He's also a great help defender. He literally comes out of nowhere to block a shot or steal the basketball. He can rebound. He's a monster on the fast break. Um, offensively in the half court, he's a great cutter. He's a great driver of the basketball. His quick first step is insane. There's probably not going to be too many guys in the league that can stay in front of his quick step. And then also, I see some potential with his three-point shot there. I feel like he knocked down some high, um, some three-point shots in the summer league that were, were that were a little bit of a high difficulty. So the the potential is definitely definitely there. I think one thing to work on with him is just his shot creation. When his athleticism doesn't allow him to beat um, the to be his defender, just coming up with counter moves so that he can score the basketball. But um, these last three NBA drafts have just been crazy for the Houston Rockets. And then they really stamped these last three drafts with what they did in free agency this season. So it's going to be very intriguing to see how much the Rockets improve next season because we know there will be improvement. But you guys comment down below. Let me know who's your favorite steal out of these last, excuse me, out of these last three NBA drafts. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and then subscribe. Subscribe for more weekly content. We do this all the time, man. And that's curtains.